In part eight on our series on psychological gesture, we talk about how to use the psychological gesture in practice. Hi, the Inspired Actor here. If you're new to this channel, we are dedicated to helping actors become better artists by offering these quick, roughly 10-minute acting classes. We also have playlists about acting in general called Actors Take Five and lots of other stuff. So don't forget to go to my channel page for all my videos. Now let's begin. A PG is the scaffolding of your part and it must remain your technical secret. Michael Chekhov. Today, we are continuing our in-depth study of Michael Chekhov's psychological gesture. So if you are new to my videos or this series, I'll put a link to the complete playlist in the notes and at the end of the video. But here's a brief recap. In part one, we covered what a PG is and how an actor uses it to find the spine of a character, scene, moment, and more. We added quality, tempo, and rhythm to PG in part two. Then in part three, we added drive, resisting force, and the artistic frame. We delved into the anatomy of a psychological gesture in part four. In parts five, six, and seven, we discussed creating a PG from scratch using inspiration, imagination, and intellect, the three eyes. Now we'll answer the most important question of all. How do you use a psychological gesture? <laughs> So let's begin with the most obvious way, which is as a tool for characterization. As I've mentioned before, PG is a great way to create the spine of the character. What I mean by that is it's a way of accessing the entire character in condensed form by attaining an understanding of your character's main desire or super objective through a physical and psychological means. My last three videos have covered creating a PG from scratch, but here's a brief way of finding a good PG for characterization. Step one, decide what your character's super objective is. Let's say, for example, it's to get her to love me. Great. Now, how does your character achieve this goal? What is the unique way your character generally or frequently uses to get her to love them? Let's say that your character is very seductive and uses seduction quite a bit to achieve that goal. Good. Now, step two is to express seduction in a physical way. Hold on. To be clear, this is not asking someone to be seductive. It's not possible to act a state of being in a truthful way. What is being asked is to physicalize the act of seduction in a way that is active and incorporates the object of your action. That's what's great about working in this way. It forces you to think actively about your objective and the object you wish to affect or goal you wish to attain to achieve your objective. As you get better at this, you can use any physical action that you like. But for now, let's start with the six main archetypal gestures that I use, which are push, pull, gather embrace, rip tear, lift, and dominate. Now, honestly, any of these gestures can work in theory. You can seduce someone by pushing them beyond their boundaries, pulling them into your body, gathering them into yourself, ripping off their clothes, making them feel like they're the most special person in the world, or making them feel like they can't live without you. Your character may use two or more of these tactics throughout the script, but there is probably one tactic that your character seems to lean on more than anything else. Let's say that you decide that a seductive pull is the one that really speaks to the core of who your character is. Once you have decided on a PG that satisfies you, step three is to make sure that it incorporates all the compositional elements that a PG should have. A good PG should use your full body, take one complete inhalation and exhalation from beginning to end, should take a good amount of physical and psychological effort to execute, should begin and end at opposing polarities of movement, uses the artistic frame of visualization, action, radiation, and then come to a full stop and should be repeatable. Now that you have your psychological gesture for your character, step four is to repeat the gesture until it is ingrained in your body mind. Then you can do the full gesture at the beginning of every rehearsal as a way of tapping into your character instantly. This will make your rehearsals richer and more fruitful and helps you to focus on whatever task is set for you for that day. After doing the gesture for a week or so, step five is to begin to veil your gesture. By veiling, I mean reducing the outward physical actions only. Try to keep as much psychological exertion as you can. 
In other words, focus and concentrate to keep the gesture as alive as possible. The goal of this is to still achieve the same results you did when you performed the gesture fully, but easing the exertion and thereby quickening the speed by which you access the psychology of the gesture. If you find you're not getting the same results when you veil, then go back to the full body gesture until you have it again. Then reduce as you are able. Some actors never really veil their gestures and that's fine. But here's the catch. The audience should never really see the gesture you are doing. The gesture is pretty much your trade secret. You are under no obligation to justify or explain your gesture to anyone, not the audience, not your fellow actors, not even the director. This is your tool. And if you don't want to do your PG in front of anyone for any reason, then find some place to do it privately if you can. A bathroom, some place backstage, in your trailer, outside the theater, anywhere you like. This is the scaffolding for your character, not the character itself. Think of it like this. Gustav Eiffel built both the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty, particularly its scaffolding, using many of the same methods. So underneath the Statue of Liberty is another Eiffel Tower, but no one will ever see that tower because they're not supposed to. That Eiffel Tower is meant only to serve as the core to the exterior work of art. That's how PG is supposed to work. That is not to say that people can't see glimpses of the gesture in your work. There are plenty of opportunities to give yourself some veiled gestures in performance if you need some extra oomph. Just make sure they are justified and do not distract from the truth of the moments you are playing. For longer runs, you may only need to imagine yourself doing the gesture with the slightest lightest movement of the arm or hand and it will activate everything you need it to for performance. Another way you can use PG are for particular moments in the story where you need it most. You may find, for example, that a monologue may really benefit by having its own PG. This doesn't need to be connected at all to your character's PG if you prefer, and you may not be using a character PG at all for this particular play or movie, but find that you just want to do it for one particular moment in the story. A single scene for example, might need its own PG because of its importance to your character or the play as a whole. To create a PG in this way, first you find your overall objective for just that scene or monologue. For example, Hamlet's to be or not to be speech might be to find my purpose. You can then decide which gesture best fits this objective in this instance. Maybe probe or rip tear would work here. Ultimately, you could decide that a brooding tear would work best for the soliloquy as a whole, and then use that gesture in rehearsal to really find the psychological core for that part of the play. In fact, some actors like to create a separate PG for each scene in the play they are in. This is a great way to physically score your entire journey through the play. And you can take five minutes before each performance to mark through the 5, 10, 20 gesture circuit that your character takes. On the other side of that, you can create PGs for small moments or beats in the play or movie as needed. I would be wary, however, of creating a new PG for every beat in the script particularly if you're doing a full play. That can amount to literally hundreds of PGs for one role. You will be very tired. I'm not saying you can't do it, but it can overcomplicate your work in a way that puts you into your head and hinders you from making truthful moment-to-moment -moment choices. I would stick to using PG on an as-needed basis. Most people use only a handful of PGs at most for one role. If you are playing multiple roles, though, having a separate PG for each character is a great way to make sure that they are different differentiated and unique characterizations. Next time, we'll finish up this series by talking about some other kinds of psychological gesture that you may find useful. Hope this inspired you. Thanks to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. We now have a thousand actors and performers just like you who want to become better artists on stage and in film. If you haven't subscribed already, I invite you to hit the button and don't forget to ring the bell if you want to be notified as soon as our next video comes out. I now have a Patreon page, so if you'd like to support my videos and help me make more, please consider joining. Click on the right for my latest video and on the left if you want to watch all my videos in psychological gesture from the beginning. And if you like to know more about me or are interested in private coaching or classes, please visit michigancheckoff.com. See you later, colleagues.